Entra. When you look at the patterns, uh, the fact is that, um, <clears throat> for example, on the Arctic ice, it, it's come back in a very big way. In Antarctica, you now have this fiasco of the people who went down there to prove the ocean was open, and, and by the way, who were very worried about carbon footprint, although they were in a diesel boat, who are now trapped in the ice, who've had two different ice uh, breakers come in to try to help them. They're not talking about they're going to do extraordinary things <laughs> so, to offset the carbon footprint <laughs> of all three of these. I mean, isn't there a point where we should at least have <laughs> some conversation about the degree to which it may not be as predictable as some of the computer models have suggested? Absolutely. Every scientific report gives you a range. They're not going to tell you exactly how much it's going to warm. They're not going to say there's going to be 100 more droughts or 100 more wildfires. These, these people aren't seeing into the future. What they're telling you, based on scientific expertise, which I don't believe you have either, is actually showing you a trend. And the trend is not, is not I mean, we may be the last four people that are having this debate. And I can tell you other countries so. are moving, yeah, moving forward, not, actually trying to wait, take wait, action. Just one second. The head of the German climatology is going to the IPCC <clears throat> meeting this week because he believes they have been totally misrepresented. Uh, and he believes, in fact, that they're not accurate. I mean, you, f you find a number of places around the world now where there are pretty sophisticated people who are saying, we have gone way overboard on but, these computer but, models. But, but part of the thing is, even you take the numbers that you just threw out there about that 60%, that's a 60% rebound in one year from, a, from one of the worst numbers that we've had. In other words, you, you can have a ball bouncing down a hill, and when you see the bounce up, you go, aha, the ball's not going down the hill. This is the kind of stuff, I think, that makes the conversation very difficult. And, you know, for, uh, get in, and then I want to... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. You're, you're looking at one spot, the Arctic. We're talking about global warming. If you look at global sea ice, it is at a record. It's, a, it's it, 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 because of the huge increase in the Antarctic. There's a decrease in the Arctic, a huge increase in the Antarctic, and of course they say, well, we have models that explain this, but Can why? I ask what, <clears throat> what scientific body you quote? Like, give me a body of people who, this, the, this, this issue is, has been studied by the largest number of scientists in the world. More, no issue. You don't have no to issue has been studied. You go to so here's, here's what Noah. you guys are doing. Here's what you guys are doing. Let me just give you the analogy. Okay, right? give me the analysis. Somebody smokes cigarettes their whole life, lives until 80 or 90. You would say, just like that one example, hey, cigarettes must be fine for you, right? No. Cigarettes must be okay. This guy lived, he smoked cigarettes, he, no, it no, must no, be okay no, for you. No, and, and You're just cherry-picking an, an and, anecdote and here and back now. That, and, and I want you to respond because that's exactly what happened with the, with the science on tobacco. My father died of lung cancer. And for about 40 years, they were handpicking science, the tobacco industry, saying, look, look at this, look at this, it's safe. And it turned out it wasn't safe. I'll never get my dad back. I don't want us to lose the planet with the same kind of bad reason. This, How do you respond this, to that? Th this is exactly the sort of fraud that we're talking about. There's this, agree is this is agreement that there's warming. There's agreement that CO2 is a, a, a global, global warming gas. There's agreement that human activity is increasing that. There's not agreement that we're heading to a catastrophe. That's the fraud. And then we look, you don't have to have denier science or denier math or denier websites. You can go to NOAA's website and look at numbers for sea ice coverage. You can go to NOAA's website and look at the trend for tornadoes. You can go to NOAA's website and look at the trend for hurricanes. It's flat. But, but look, let me just ask that's, about that's science for a second. Not some. mine. That's I'm, not heritage. I'm very happy to debate science. Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll give you an example of a large anomaly because my, my argument would be, the compared to the sun and compared to various patterns of Earth behavior, if you look out over time, it is very unlikely that carbon loading in the atmosphere is nearly as powerful as these things. I'll give you one specific. 11,000 years ago, for reasons we have no understanding of, the Gulf Stream quit. If you had 600 years of a little ice age in Europe with glaciers coming down across northern Europe, after 600 years, the Gulf Stream started. I don't know that there's a single climatologist on the planet today who can explain either why it stopped or why it started. Now, if you have things on this scale, and by the way, you're seeing this start up right now on what explaining the last 16 years with a sunny going, oh yeah, you remember there's this thing happening in the Pacific and the ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, there are, and this, there are this. other factors. Uh, no, I'm just saying all of a sudden stuff we didn't even, some of which we didn't know existed 10 years ago are suddenly major factors that have nothing to do with carbon. So isn't it at least fair to say carbon may be a factor, but so may solar energy, so may the Earth's, the, the Earth's magnetic field, so may the, <laughs> the, the tilting of the Earth. There are a lot of factors here. I, I, I am a biologist, actually, by training. I don't know, you know how many... We're doing this through politics. If nine out of ten doctors came to you and told you your kid was sick and there is something you should do about it, would you really say, well, I'm not really sure. I'm going to trust the one doctor who still isn't, thinks he's okay and thinks there's some other factor that you don't control 
that's actually going to... No, we're talking about the future of our planet. There's a moral obligation here for us to start acting.